This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. In these cases, it traps it in, doesn't go anywhere. All right, so right here's a leak, and somewhere in this right here, yeah, look at that. This is your medium temp rack, it's 813. We'll narrow it down. I put a leak up here, that way we know. All right, so we came back to look at this case here that we had a leak from over the, I don't know, two weeks ago that I was here, I wrote that we had a leak up here. Anyhow, as you can see, I've stopped the fans. I have valved off the suction pressure so it's building up and uh, it's just going berserko. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into our PPM mode as usual. We'll see if we can narrow it down. Problem is my coil in that nasty back action section there and I don't think it's gonna be very easy to uh, find it, unfortunately. Uh, but this is probably not gonna pull out very good. We'll see. Yeah, it's, it's probably a big leak. Let's jump down here, because I'm pretty sure it's on the end. Because when it went off, it was in the air band over here to the left. Yeah, it's definitely up here on the left. Same as what I figured when we found the leak. Put it in perspective, that cover comes apart here on top, which pulling that out is probably not gonna be very easy. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is terrific. So what you have to do is you gotta take out them screws there, 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 and drag it out. <sighs> Loving it. It definitely is in this vicinity here. It's towards the bottom, as you can see. Oh yeah, she's not happy. Tell me about it. Tell me how you don't feel good. Yep, tell me where it hurts. There we go. Get down here in the bottom. Look at that, we're gonna go over a thousand here, probably. Yeah, yeah it's leaking down there in the bottom somewhere on that bottom loopy dupes. Hopefully, not so much here. Because if it's in the middle of the coil, I am not gonna even try. Yeah, not even gonna try. What's bad is, is it's right there in the middle where it's gonna be the hardest to get my torch in there to fix it. And I don't think it's just one or two. That's really bad. All right, probably the best thing to do here in this case is probably why they cut it before. Repairing it in place, which was how I did the last one, wasn't too bad, but this one here, because the case is at the end, there's just no way to get into it. All right, so we're gonna make an end piece for that out of seven eighths. I got an inch and three eighths now, an inch and an eighth. So I can do pretty big size refrigeration copper. Got these both at True Tech Tools, as always, guys. Uh, actually, I got the whole thing from True Tech Tools. So, anyhow, about 105. I don't want to get too stupid. Now, granted, these coils, freaking, some of them are actually going through high gas defrost. And so they get hit with 250 area. Oh, the band aids are starting to come off again. Let's see here, kids. We've got got that one right there. It's got mushroom little honeycombs. You got one right there. You got that one right there. Got one over here. It was missing. Let's let's just go ahead and build a whole new coil while we're at it. There's one. There's one down here in bottom. Missed that one. The one I'm using here is my two tipped head here. I went through. I used brake cleaner after running the brush wheel on it. Well, I went ahead and just did all of them. And this is the side that wasn't even really, you know, leaking the worst. Still gotta do that other side, but that's what we're doing. I don't, I didn't really wanna run the full blown GoPro, so I'm just using my phone. But that's what's going on. We didn't get her super, super clean. I mean, I literally got it clean, but then I burned off the brake fluid. So you can see I went through and completely redid all those. Because what's gonna happen generally is you're gonna have one that gets fixed and the one beside that leaks. So we end up going through completely through the whole thing. We just ran the garden hose and melted the ice off. We just took it out the, out the uh, side here and we've got everything done up. So we've got these all, it all pressure tested. Got our pipe undone there. And this turned out fairly well for what I had to work with. Those are the original ones there. I didn't mess with those. There's mine, look more like normal. And a couple of those had some weirdos in there, but we was able to get into it. And uh, I just went ahead and went over all of them. As far as anything in the middle, 
Didn't do ultrasonic, anything like that, because I'm not gonna fix it anyway. Got her back in there. Got that little flat plate there in there. Just got done pulling a the vacuum there. Just let some out through the liquid. Stopping it here at the suction port. We got about 95 on there. We're gonna go out and check that suction line. All right, so we've got that breeze back together there. Went ahead and put some nylog on all of my flare fittings. Put that back together. And since it does not appear to be leaking, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all detached. I've been bit in the butt where micro bubbles may not show up right away, so sometimes it's just better to double check it with your leak detector. I uh, am not getting anything on any of my repairs. Like I said, we've already evacuated it. I'm kind of just waiting to see, you know, is there anything leaking through the center? If there is, it's tough look Scooby-Doo. Um, I'm not uh, picking up anything, which is good. And over here is where everything was a disaster. I would say we are good as far as this thing's concerned for today, until it leaks again. God only knows if this other high quality piece of machinery has got any issues. Oh, that's, that's always a good thing to know. Great, so we've got an older, this other coil's probably leaking too. Awesome. The problem is the whole store is like this. Unbelievable. All right, guys, so I just repaired this coil two days ago. As I was putting it back together, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any leaks. I was scanning around, and when I brought my wand over to here, it went off. Then it went dead, then it went off again over here. What we ended up doing is coming back. This is a lot smaller coil than what the other one was. I cut it there, undid the TXV after we obviously pumped it down, and uh, we got it in the back here. I didn't record actually doing the repair on that one. Let's go ahead and show you what I did. Okay, what we got going on here, same coil, same setup we had before. So we got the same pipe we had the last time. Just gonna slide that on a little bit. This here's Captain Hook, made by UniWeld. So is my torch handle. Now this is Victor Torches, which belong to the company, but I bought the handle and the tips because this little tip here, which I'll have links in the bottom, you guys wanna buy it through the links. It's the same price as you know Amazon normal but I get a commission off of it without paying a nickel more out of your pocket. I like this handle because the knobs are up towards the front instead of the back. So we got our acetylene. You can leave them long, you can leave them short. I kind of do a little bit of both. This really is not necessary here on this particular, but if you are in that case and you're trying to get all the way around it like this, as you see we're kind of like all the way around it and you can just Move it back and forth a little bit. Just about basically do one thing here and then bring it into it. Got my bucket here. You guys have seen this a million times. It's where I keep my micron gauge, which True Tech Tools, Blue Vac, best gauge on the market, period, bar none. And then that's where I keep my other goodies. I've got all this stuff listed in my tool area down there. Viper Wet Rag, Viper supported me. I gotta give them a shout out. If you wanted to, you could purge through the coil, get all uh, the air out of it so that when we're, when we're doing the brazing, we're not corroding the inside of the pipe with carbon. Now, just so you guys understand, this is not my idea of what I wanted to do. I am not one for avoiding spending money on a new coil at all. Getting these are sometimes very hard. We're gonna go ahead and go down here and we're gonna squirt all these down with a nice solid stream. Chances are I'm going to go through here <laughs> and redo every one of these, because if you do the one beside it, I guarantee you the other one beside it will likely leak. Now, what I used was my wire brush wheel for most of it, and what I couldn't get to with that, I used brake cleaner and then wiped it all off. That worked really well. I would have never thought it would have done that good, but it did. Pretty much all of them are on the solder joints, so we're gonna go around and get all those. Let's see what we got over here on this side. This is gonna be a mess, because these are a major pain in the butt. See the water beating up? That is a sure sign of oil. Where there's oil, there's a refrigerant leak. Right there's one's leaking on the end. There's one in the middle there leaking. There's one right there. So just plan on doing them all. We'll go ahead and open this side up, which will let the nitrogen through, pushing the oxygen out, and then we'll do our repair. We got one of our other guys over here doing a repair on the thermostat we just installed. It's a Ranko, and it was off by seven degrees, so we had to come back and replace that. Okay, we're gonna go through here. We're gonna get all that 
big blue off and we're gonna get all that nasty crap off. Now, what I noticed last time I was here, cause I had no choice but just to only do this, as long as I got the nasty rough crap off, it actually worked pretty doggone good. I have a couple leaks on this manifold over here that I didn't have on the last one. We're gonna try to get in here as best we can with the brush wheel. The cleaner, the better. All you can do is do your best. I'd like to see these replaced, but unfortunately, it's not in the cards. Even when they have replaced cases, they were 13 years old. Bought them used from somewhere else. So, I mean, it's just expensive. These cases are super, super expensive. Some of these cases, like the deli cases, can be $45,000. It takes a lot of, a lot of baloney sales to pay for that. And I get paid the same amount of money to sit here and do this as I do some of the other stuff I do. So what's it matter to get any of that last residual that we just broke loose off? Like I said, this stuff is flammable, so you wanna make sure you get it all off. And I'll just go balls the wall in there and trying to get into it. Let's see what we can do here. I've already got this set up so I can go on both sides, but we're going to basically what I did on all the other ones. And I got my top nice and warm. And once I got it ready to flow, but you know, I like to just do a little tap, kind of see. And I'll even throw a little bit on the back side just for shadizzles. Come in here into this inside, get in there like that, pull it to the back. Same thing here, we're pulling it in there. We're not just coating it around the top. We're literally getting in there and getting it all the way to the back. Come on to this one here, it's nice and warm already. We're gonna give it a little bit of heat, drag it across. There we go, it's starting to pull. We're moving around because we do not want to burn through this thing. That would suck. There we go. Going in there. There we go. Pull it into the back. And there you go. So that's how we're doing it. So we've got it all the way around. And what we're doing is we're using just enough heat to do the job. Now what sucks is when you're on this other, other loops, we're not able to go in here at an angle like I'm doing right now. We've got all of these. They're all completely done. Don't look too bad. I don't have too many major issues there. Everything's soaked in pretty good. We're able to come in here like this, like this, the bottom, and pull it all the way back into the actual, uh, I always call it a pocket or a socket, but every one of them looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and go through. Every one of them sunk in like they should. Went ahead and went around everything on it and completely redid it all ready to do a pressure test on it. So we went ahead and went through everything here and everything worked out good. I did have one screw up down here at the bottom. I didn't pull into the pocket quite far enough. And then I had one screw up here on this one here, which was hard to get to, but I went over top of it again, just used my C-shape in for that one again. And then I used my rosebud, like I said, for the other one. So we've got it. We went ahead and repressurized it to 125. We're ready to throw this thing back in there and. Uh, pull back on it and get her up and going. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Let's see if we can get this thing in there. <clears throat> Such a shit setup. There we go. This is like new again. There we go, put it back in there like that. There we go. All right. See if we can get that slit on there. Look at that. Let's get a little tappy tap. Didn't tappy tap very good. It's gotta go dead away. This probably help if it wasn't in the way. There we go. Look at that. Hot diggity dogs. There we go. Maybe go up and down a couple times. There we go. Perfect. I go see how that does. So I use a zoom spout oil there with some PoE oil in it. We're just gonna put that on our fittings so that everything kind of screws together nice and easy. We're gonna put some most importantly on the back side of this flare here. Okay, now we can go ahead if we want, see if we can get this apart. We could try to do the body, but honest to goodness is I think I'm just gonna see about getting a new TXV. Somebody's probably tightened it so tight that they've smashed that little miniature ring that's in there that's made to do the ceiling, but somebody probably got on there with their Gorilla Grip and decided to destroy it, thinking that that was gonna be the best way to do it. 
And once it's smashed, it's pretty well screwed after that. So adding that oil hopefully will help there. I'd really like to try to do that body. So let's go ahead and put a little oil in between there. We'll see if it leaks or anything and we get done there. And the screen was really clean on the other one. I don't feel like doing it, but I kind of feel like, you know what? Since all eyes are gonna be on this, probably should do it. Because otherwise somebody else will come along and find it's plugged and then you're the idiot. There's the screen. It's clean. Just eliminated that as a possible problem later. A little bit here. Don't wanna get too stupid. Okay, it's not wiggling. Light on the bottom. I don't see no light coming through, so we know we've got good contact with the pipe. It's kind of on the edge, three o'clock area. Don't want it on bottom. They have different positions based on the diameter of the pipe. That was where it was at, so we're putting it back that way because that's how the superheat was set up originally. All right, so we've got her up and going. We're pulling back. We're not gonna use micron gauge. I'm just gonna make sure we hold it 30 inches. This old ass uh, lines and stuff are all yeah, I highly doubt they're holding perfect. And not to mention the oil that's in there would take forever to pull a perfect vacuum. Anybody that says they would do that on this is a freaking liar. So we're moving on, uh, not to mention all of the potential leaking through the valves here and the liquid. So it's just, it's not worth it. But we'll valve off every so often, make sure it holds 30 inches and we'll move on. Okay, we got that back on there. We're gonna go ahead, relieve. We're gonna let some liquid back into the system. You're gonna see that thing jump up. We're still valved off on our suction there. That should be plenty to get us up to at least 80 pounds. It's leaking on the one beside it. Okay, so we had an alarm, and of course it's the one that I didn't even touch, but it got hot beside it, and that's where it's leaking at. We're not even leaking on the one I was on. Pump her down again. Didn't pick up anything on the valve. Okay, we just rebraze that. We're getting ready to recheck everything. This should all be perfectly okay because we did the nitrogen check on it. Now, if there's anything leaking in the middle here, ain't gonna be nothing we can do about that. We used the blower there to blow anything out that was maybe laying around in there. So we're going back through, we're on super mode still. So, like I said, we just used the Milwaukee thing. Thank goodness we don't have anything back here in the coil, I don't think. It's leaking on those distributors, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, on high mode, it's not leaking there, but on the distributors, it's leaking. I do not want to repair that. That's brass. That can be a total disaster. Okay, now we're into distributor tubes. We're looking at about 290 to 300, depending on where we're at. So. And you got this guy breathing down our neck saying, how much longer are you gonna be? So we're gonna take a chance here. I loosened it up so we get the tension off of it. We get the blue rod, already flux it with the other flux. We're gonna do what we can do with it. Just let it naturally cool down. All right, you guys wanna see when things go wrong? Here you go. So we got this fixed, which I was pretty scared that it was gonna probably fall apart because you can see all the pitting in it. But when you're working with turds, you still have turds and you can see how pit all this crap is. But on the bottom that you can't see, some solder has came on down here to the freaking flare fitting. So hopefully it's not actually inside of my distributor tube. So we've gotta pump it down one more time so we can do it again. I am having a good time. And this here, it appears it was just drizzle. I don't know where it came from. It could have been from this top piece where the 3 8 comes out. That seems like I got it. Oil it up again, put it back together, hope for the best. Definitely got a little bit of uh, funky monkey juice in there. That's when there's no way in hell you're gonna run nitrogen in there. So you just put your brush in there, knock the stuff back out. I don't see solder in the orifice itself. So we'll grab some oil, put back on her. I start my camera before I know what the results are gonna be. Nothing's coming out of the bottom, that's good. It's leaking from the fitting, ain't it? Yeah, it's leaking from the flare. 
you know tightening this up ain't gonna make a difference but hey let's try it anyway nope still leaking that's the way i love it all right guys so we ended up taking it apart i don't know if i recorded it or not but i'll show a picture this tube popped out that makes your stomach just go oh yeah this is gonna be great i'm so glad i'm here today type thing you know i ended up putting it up against it fluxed it heated it up pushed it in i definitely recommend undoing this like i did originally by not doing that it caused tension on the line and it popped it out which i was an idiot because i knew up front that i shouldn't have done that went ahead took the flare apart cleaned the flare out with the wire brush cleaned it all out wiped it out put good old nylog good supporter of the channel and put it on the face and on the back of the nut or yeah back of the flare put it back together and by golly i think i finally got it I have done this multiple times over and over. I am so beyond ready to leave. It's now almost five o'clock. So yeah, this has been going on for quite a while. We got at least 90 pounds of pressure. I left the suction stop, stop, closed. It appears we got it. Not perfect, guys. I definitely have my problems. Everything else here went really good on that, but this part here just really stunk. We're in super mode, just using my blower down there and blow this all out. We're all in the crevices there. We're getting nothing. On the flare joint, nothing. Bottom side of it. Nothing, nothing on any of that, none of the flares, nothing on those distributors, nothing on the distributors at the actual unit, nothing in this area here, nothing on the one that was originally leaking, nothing on the other side of the TXV, and nothing on the, the equalizer tube, nothing down there, and I've already scanned the other side of the coil. So as long as it feeds on that one that may have came that came apart i'll be okay all right let's check these distributor tubes i have turned the system on and if these are feeding they're all going to be cold that one's cold that one's cold all four of them are cold it's feeding finally something goes right today <laughs> all right very good all right so let's get this thing together so we're coming over here to the a13 which was a 20 foot lunch meat. We're at 36 to 41 already. At 41, that was the last one I just did. That was the uh, coil. You can see we were all the way up to 70s. Maybe you can't, because sometimes this doesn't focus real great. Last, you know, it went 51, 46, 43, 51. So it's dropping just like it should. The other ones are already at 35. You can see that we have been holding really good now that we set the EPR. For whatever reason, they didn't have the EPR set right. You can see these ones here cranked all the way out. It's like, why? I have no idea and I'm afraid to change stuff like that. But I set this one here at about, I think I set it at about 25 degrees, 22. Actually it was 20 degrees originally. And I'd rather set it somewhere around 25 so that we could hold maybe 35 degree areas. So you usually go about 10 degrees below, just depending on the case, sometimes it's 15. but. Seems to be 10, 12, somewhere in that ballpark. You gotta watch it, see where you're at. But that's what those do. But like I said, it's kind of weird that somebody's taken some of these out. Maybe they fell out. Not sure. Right now, we've got it back together, got the caps back on it. The rack seems to be still at a decent level. We're at two, uh, 20%. That's assuming that it's accurate. Other cases appear to be pretty decent. You can look at set points. You gotta remember too, none of these are really set. They're just whatever the EPR landed at. Probably could use a little more in it, but honestly, I don't really wanna put it in there just now. Uh, we got more stuff that we could be doing. We're waiting on approval for getting the oil changed and the oil filters. All right, guys, I appreciate taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.